wrestling fan, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, uh, let's get ready to rumble! I'm back, so deal with it. Let's do this! Finally, The Rock has come back! Live TV is awesome. The spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run Twenty-six days away until WrestleMania 31. Graham Juice and Matthews here, sitting alongside the illustrious RJ Marceau at RJ underscore Marceau on Twitter. How's it going tonight? It's at Raymond underscore Marceau. Raymond, I apologize. A little screw up there, but I'm doing good tonight, Graham. <laughs> also tonight we have we have Sal on the line. How's it going tonight, Sal? Good, really good, actually. Sounds good. I'm doing well as well after last night's enjoyable episode of Monday Night Raw. I thought that was a good show. And we are on the fast lane, no pun intended, on the road. To WrestleMania, like I said, 26 days away. The card is pretty much set in stone, even though very few matches have been confirmed. Orton and Rollins, Cena, Rusev, Sting, Triple H, Lesnar, Reigns. So many matches. The Honor the Memori- uh, the Honor the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So many matches set in stone for WrestleMania. It's looking like it's a strong show. We talked about it last week, but the news of the week this week, and RJ has been begging to ask about this. Has been begging to talk about this, and we're going to talk about it right now. Rey Mysterio has been officially released from the WWE as of last Thursday, I believe it was. His contract expired. It's been going on for months now. It's been going back since last summer, saying that he wanted to get out of his contract. They wanted him to make up the time, and they can never really come to an agreement for him to get his release, but he finally got his release, and he looks to be um, Lucha Underground bound by later this year. He's going to be doing a lot of indie dates, especially one in New York, which we might be going to, which would be awesome if we could meet him, but nevertheless, um, RJ, I'll start with you because you are a big Mysterio fan, asking hashtag Where's Ray for the last couple of months now? What are your thoughts on Ray Mysterio leaving the WWE? It's devastating. Um, big Ray Mysterio fan, probably my favorite wrestler of all time. When I started walking, watching back in 2002, I fell in love with Ray Mysterio as a kid. I thought he was like a superhero, literally could defy gravity and do all these different moves. And it just, it just sucks that he's leaving. I know he's getting up there in age, and I know he wanted to leave, but he never really had like a good farewell match. Like you said, his last match was against Bad News Barrett, and like. A squash match. <laughs> the night after WrestleMania. Exactly. The night after WrestleMania got squashed, so kind of sucks to see him go, but he had a great career, no doubtably a Hall of Famer, and um, I just wish I, 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 I had so many Rey Mysterio shirts as a kid, but obviously I grew up, so don't have any anymore, but I really need to get Rey Mysterio shirt. I looked online, like, shop already doesn't even have him up there anymore. So. They don't? Yeah, not even on wow. the WWE shop anymore. And he was a so. big seller, too. Exactly, so uh, might have to go, like, on eBay or something to try to get a shirt, because I love my boy Ray, so... Sad to see him go, but good luck for like all his future endeavors with like Indy. And if he's on Lucha Underground, I'll probably start sticking to that and watching that more often. And uh, hopefully he can continue on and, like no injuries because he's getting up there in age and he's had his injury history. But besides that, um, just want to thank him for all he's done for WWE and just good childhood hero. Now that he's gone from WWE, much like Punk, I feel like he might be able to open up one of those shirts on or one of those stores on the Pro Wrestling T-shirt store or whatever it's called, uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. Um, Jericho yeah. has one, Punk has one. I feel like Mysterio might be able to do one of those as well, and they can have a lot of great merch because he was one of the best sellers in the last. The guy with we were talking about this before since 2002. This guy's been with the company. And what boggled my mind the most was that he didn't really get one more run, which is fine. I mean, I understand that, but give him one more match at the very least. Like you said, future Hall of Famer. But they didn't even acknowledge the departure, not even on TV, which is okay. I don't expect them to. But on the website, not even like an article wishing him the best in his future endeavors. They just put out a statement. I don't know if it was on their Twitter or on their corporate website. They just said, um, we have come to the terms of the release of Rey Mysterio, and that's it. Like, no acknowledgement on the on the website. And most people probably, you know, don't even remember the guy's been on TV in like a year. But, you know, something like that would have been nice. Like you said, the guy's been in the company for the last... Over a like year. So I don't and care. A half. It was like on Raw against Adam Rose and he beat Adam Rose. Like just a good farewell match for him to win. Like just come out and just cut a promo saying I'm retiring, I'm done, or something like that. They exactly. did it for freaking Santino of all people. You can't do the same thing for Rey Mysterio. You know, it's not like Punk where yeah. he walked out. You know, the guy, heck, you know, his contract. It's was not like up. he had like that like dysfunction with the with the <clears> management <throat> stuff. He had a bunch of injuries, and then they want him to come back and like do up his time. Like it's not his fault he kept getting injured. But yeah, he just said no. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah I mean, and what the, I hate the most. 
No, go right ahead. The most what they did is, what's it called? They, uh, like, the last thing I remember of, like, Rey Mysterio, like, big-wise is he beat the Miz to win the title, then he loses to Cena, and then they don't, then, like, they completely forget about Mysterio and that whole title picture storyline. Like, they just, like, up their back down. Like, yeah. I think they had, yeah. like, a... It was, yeah, he held that title for like two seconds, yeah. <laughs> that was the thing, too, because he had a really good match with Miz, and that match with John Cena, I mentioned this in the video the other day, but the match with John Cena on that episode of Raw was really, really good, and they gave him that rematch, like you said, um, like a, like a next week, I think it was, or a couple weeks later, and like right after SummerSlam, I think it was, and they had Mysterio lose that match, he got injured, and then he came back like a year later, but they never did anything with him. He was like tagging with with Sin Cara, and that never led anywhere. That's yeah. what I think disappointed me the most. I thought that was going to be like a tag run maybe. Yeah, and then lead to, a, lead to a feud or something between the two. That match never happened, which was disappointing because I think for all the botches that the, the guy did, um, the original Sin Cara Mystica, whatever you want to call him as, I think that match could have been great. And now they could do that match in Mexico, but it's not it's the not same. It's not the same. It's not WWE. It's not on the grand well, stage of WrestleMania. Like, I you know? think, like, like you said, like they just never get like they've given guys that like have screwed up. Like, cha- like Jeff Hardy got like he's had his moments. Like they give him like a nice future endeavors, like stuff like that. Like Rey Mysterio, a loyal wrestler for twelve years, one of their best merch sellers, one of the best Latino star mm-hmm. they've ever had, pretty much besides Eddie Guerrero. You could consider them one too close at least, and then. He sold a lot of merch, like, had his moments, like, brought, like, kind of like that little man mentality, like, Daniel Brown, like, made those guys kind of, like... Kind of paved the way for those guys. Exactly, paved the way for them, like... The biggest debate is, that people talk about is, where would, like, if Eddie never actually passed, like, what would have happened with Ray? Like, that's always what I wonder, like... I think, I I don't think he would have been as high as he was if Eddie didn't die. Probably wouldn't have won the world title, but he was still feeding with Eddie the year before, though, in a pretty prominent program. Exactly. I I, I think, like, that obviously shot him to the main event, but, like, I think he obviously had the talent to be a main eventer, but, like, they actually gave him there, but I think they kind of just gave him a raw deal. Like, he was a loyal guy. He wasn't, like getting arrested or talking bad about the company and stuff like that. Like, he wrestled – like, I just think that's wrong for them, but it is what it is, and hopefully they go on their yeah, separate ways. Like, after 27, like, his, like, career, like, sort of, like, went down. Like, not his fault, but, like, he had that great match with Cody at WrestleMania, one of the matches of the night on that card. Probably the match of the night on that card. But then, like, at WrestleMania – before that, he was in big high profile matches, and I think 28. What was he? Was he in the 28? Um, that match with Cody was at 27. I mean, he wasn't at 28. No, he was still injured. Oh, uh, yeah, 27 and 28. I I think he was scheduled. I think they were going to do Hunico. Well, not Hunico. Um, Sin Cara versus yeah. Mysterio. Sin Cara versus Mysterio there, but he was injured, so they couldn't. And then 29, they just, he. I think they just ended up dropping it, dropping the ball with that. So it just never happened. And. Sucks that he's gone, though. I'm say. Yeah, I think they were going to do the match at 29, too. But yeah, they, they, hurt. someone mentioned to me the other day when I, when I was talking about the last week, saying that the injuries were kind of messing up the time. And I understand that. It's not that. his fault. He's getting it's old. Not, and... It's not his fault. It's not Sinkara's fault. They just get injured at random It, it also kind of did suck that they put him in that 30 and throw a rumble and he got booed out of the uh, joint. That wasn't... I mean, if you look back, I mean, the final run of his career, he's going to remember for, the, for being the guy that came out at number 30, got booed out of the building, had that one match against Bad News Bear, got squashed, and got booed when he came out by that post WrestleMania crowd, and then we oh, had, yeah, then the Survivor Series of um, match where Roman Reigns like speared everyone mm-hmm. and basically won it for his team. I think he was like he ended up getting speared by Roman Reigns, so like he didn't even have like I even I forgot what if he won any matches like on his like last run. Like, no, he had nah, a really bad roster. Yeah, run. that he he lost that match. He was like tagging with Big Show for like five minutes the following month, and that was that. He was in the Rumble, like we mentioned. And it really just never panned out. He didn't really do anything. He didn't win many matches. And I know, granted, he's injured, but like we were saying before, the guy's a top merch seller. And it's not like, oh, we found our next Latino star, so we, we can't afford to kind of de-push you. They never did. I mean, we have Kalisto right now, but he's not on the main roster. I don't he's think not, he'll be much either. I don't think he's going to be world champion, but I think he's really good, and I think he can kind at of... At least they're not doing a gay hairstyle gimmick. At least they're not doing that. Yes, exactly. Well, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not I, not I, yet. I, I'm hoping that was just a rumor, and that wasn't actually going to be something that they were actually considering, but... um. At all least, I can imagine is something like a Rico. Like yeah, like a Rico. I was literally exactly. about to say that. Rico, Rico was up. great in that role. But uh, Kalisto is much more has much more potential in this current and, tag team with you know Sin Cara. And I think Darren Young even commented on something like saying that if they like that he wouldn't even like if they did that because you know Darren Young actually being gay like it was kind of screwed up like yeah, like is exactly. 
Yeah, I think he commented on it too. But yeah, Kalisto, I think we don't have to worry. I think they realize what they have with him, and he's going to be really, really good on his own down the line. Not like Rey Mysterio-esque, but I think he can fill in that nice role on the main roster. They actually did make their main roster debut, I think, in the last couple of weeks on like main event or something like that, but they haven't been on Raw and SmackDown yet. Who? Um, the Lucha Dragons. But at least it's another addition to the tag team I just division. don't. I just never. I'm. Ne- I just never bought the whole lucha thing. I think it's an NXT thing. Like the lucha, yeah, that thing. People will poop all over that thing. I don't think it's going to get anywhere in the main roster. But Sin Cara is damage goods. We talked about that before. But I think Kalisto Ooh, on his own is really good. What? Unico. Unico Sin Cara. The the char- The gimmick itself. That that this mask is, is like cursed. a kiss of death. Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah, not yeah, doing Sin Cara. Good. Yeah. There's, like, there's, he came in and it was just a flop, and then like Sin Cara, this is basically him. Like he loses match, but then he beats the top star. I'm like, what is going on with this guy? Like he beat Ben who's there. I'm like, okay, so what is like when I saw him beat Ben who's there? I'm like, he's your Intercontinental Champion. He comes out of nowhere, beats Ben who's there. It. Mm-hmm. That was like a week after he won the that. title too. The time it could <laughs> like, not have been worse. I'm just glad that like they're like I'm just glad that they're not putting them in the ladder match at WrestleMania because they're basically basing it off people who beat Ben Barrett will be in the Intercontinental Championship match at WrestleMania. That's basically how it goes. Pretty much, yeah. He's getting the short end of the stick, and guys are like our truth are in there. I mean, they have a really good roster except for our truth. But if you're gonna put our truth, and... I even had the idea that maybe our truth won't even be in the match, and maybe he'll get maybe he'll get quote unquote injured, and then Sheamus comes out at WrestleMania instead as a heel, but. I could see that. I mean, I, we were talking about before the show went live on what they're going to do with Sheamus, and I feel like at this point, you're not going to put him in a singles match. I mean, he's either in the Battle Royal or in this match, and I feel like they're probably going to put him in this match. But, um, you know, if he hasn't returned yet, I don't see him returning, like, two or three weeks before WrestleMania. At this point, he might just come back at WrestleMania. And you know what? That's actually a really good idea. I could see that happening. But I could see them... would care if he... No one would care. If you... No one, yeah. If, mm, yeah, right. I mean, I don't know. I could see him taking out our truth because at this point exactly, you can't but, do exactly. You can't put him in with our truth because you can't put like as of right now. It, it looks like we got Barrett, Truth, Ambrose, Ziggler, Brian, Harper. I don't know if I mentioned Harper. That's five or six guys right there. And then with Sheamus, it's like seven people. It's way too many. So I feel like if I you like. Want to... If you want to give Sheamus major heat, have him take out Ambrose or Bryan, but they will not do that, and I do not know if to do that, but that would get him major heat. But Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I'm a, yeah, but you can't I'm take out Bryan, though. I'm assuming that they're, I'm assuming that Extreme Rules, you're going to see a bryan Sheamus rivalry. That's my guess. If they, want, they want to do it at WrestleMania in the first place, so mm-hmm. why not have it at Extreme Rules? Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. That's the thing right now, because I like the current card as it stands for WrestleMania, but where do you go with these guys after WrestleMania. No, I could so see like Brian winning and then Sheamus, him and Sheamus like a IC title run. That would actually be pretty for the good. IC championship. Yeah. I would, I would like to yeah. see it. if it wasn't for the IC title. They're like, there's no point. Yeah, obviously. that's the only thing. But yeah, if it was for a championship, I wouldn't mind. At least, they, like I said before, I'm, I'm not against the idea. I think the only reason I didn't like it at WrestleMania was because it was so far down the card. For one thing, with all these part timers coming back at Extreme Rules, it would get higher up on the card, and the match you know is going to be great. That's not the issue. It's just more so the fact that. One, we've seen it before, and it was going to be like the opener on the card. At least I would like to see something fresh between him and Here's, Ziggler, you know? That's an idea I had. Um, have Cena beat Rusev, Brian win the IC title, then like maybe at SummerSlam have a unification match between Cena and Brian for the like a mid-card mix match. Like, you know, mm-hmm. unify those two titles with Cena and Brian and make it mean something. That's what I was I mean, thinking, too. In, like, a dream booking world, I would love to see it. I don't see it happening because I don't feel like they would do that with the mid-card titles. Exactly, because you know? they need mid-card titles to try to, like, keep people relevant. Like, I feel like some – like, those mid-card guys, you can't – like, would I really care, like, Ambrose or, like, Cesaro's single match? Not really. Like, I feel like they – The title like, adds a little bit, even though the IC title doesn't mean anything right now. U.S. title means a lot, but – a lot more than the IC does right now. I think yeah. if Brian and Cena held them for a good amount of time, it would make them way more relevant. Yeah, I could see them doing maybe not a mid-core title unification match, even though I would be fine with Just that. champion could, versus champion would even... Champion versus champion. I could see them doing... We talked about this. I think you mentioned it last week, maybe in a different form, but Brian as the IC champion versus the world champion and, and Seth Rollins or something at SummerSlam. I could see that and have Brian be the first one since Warrior because no one else has done it since. And... Because Kane, like you said, Triple H did it, but he was the world champion, yeah. and he merged the titles. Yeah. Um, but Warrior was the one, he was the Intercontinental Champion, beat the world champion. So no one's done it since. I think it would be great if Brian was the one to do it. The thing with Brian, and I heard someone mention this before, like last week or so, and they made a really good point. Do you think, and Sal, I'll ask you first, do you think that Brian is kind of filling in the Benoit role and that they gave him his nice little push as world champion 
but they wanted to give him his time above, you know, on the top of the roster, but they never really saw him as a top guy. They never really saw him as a John Cena-like figure. After they gave him that little run, you know, he's back to being upper mid-card, mid-card, mid-card guy. Do you think Brian is going to be filling that Benoit-like role going forward? Yes and no at the same time. Yes in the sense that um, he's a smaller guy and the game is pushed and now he's like, kind of not even like in the upper matches, but I do see, I do think that Brian will be world champion again, not not like Ben Wall. Like, I don't think they're going to like completely like not give Brian his run again. I think they will. It's just they want to do Roman Reigns this time around. So I think maybe next year or a few years, maybe Brian will be champion again. That's my guess. I don't think they're going to completely forget about the guy in the main event picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's the- how I feel about it. That the booking of the, the the booking of the Brian character is so aching to Ben Waz. That's why I say that. So I fear the worst when it comes to like his future and whatever. But the difference between Ben Waz and Brian is that one. Ben, uh, Brian can talk. He's a good talker. He's a better all around entertainer. Um, even though they're both ama- both amazing wrestlers, of course. Brian has that. He he has improved his mic skills over the years, and he's organically over. He is way over. One of the most over guys in the last couple of years. So, I mean, I feel like, yeah, he absolutely should be world champion again. Um, whether he will or not, probably. I mean, I don't want to say completely yes, because you can never really be sure. Like, um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But, RJ, I want to get your thoughts. Do you feel like Daniel Bryan will ever be world champion again? I think he'll, I think he'll easily be champion again. I think, like you said, I think I think it is kind of like Benoit asked, like, you got his run. But, like you said, he's way more over than Benoit ever was. And he's just a better entertainer, I think. It would just be like the crowd would just not let that happen, him not getting another run. He never even, like, technically had his rematch for the title, so I think they have to do that eventually. Yeah, the story right there. Exactly. Yeah. I like, think Ben Wall, ben Wall losing to Orton hurt Ben Wall because they wanted to go a completely different direction, just take the title right off Ben Wall. Orton went through that in nowhere. So I think that hurt Ben Wall in the sense that he was never the same after that. But I think since Brian never actually lost the title legitimately to Lesnar like he was scheduled to, I think, like, the fans, like, he's still on that. Even though he never lost a title, he's still on the title hunt. Like, he's on the, like, Brian, the yes chance are the biggest when he's on the title hunt. That's what I believe. Like, I feel like if he went on a run, the fans wouldn't be as invested in it. Today, I can be wrong, but you know what I'm saying. Like, if he had, like, a long run, they're like, oh, we got, like, we got our yes move. Like, the yes move would happen and everything. And then I feel like it kind of would have hurt if he lost it legitimately. Yeah, That's I can see I that. personally be. No, I yeah, I, I can too. absolutely see that. Yeah, I feel like he was more over on the road to WrestleMania as opposed to after WrestleMania. He was still very much over, obviously. But I think Brian, being the underdog that he is, was never really destined for a long run with the belt. He was only, like you said, like only he was only going to hold it until SummerSlam until he dropped it to Lesnar. But um, that's why I wanted him to win the Rumble because I feel like him in Chase mode, that's where the money is with Brock with Roman Reigns. There's something there, not organically, but there's something there with Brian. I feel like that's where the money would have been, even though the dynamic. Sad, Roman Reigns is force fed. Brian is we want what we want. Like yeah. you can't yeah. force feed someone. That's what they did with Cena. And of course, and, and Cena gets yeah, he gets a good reaction. He has half booze. That's how Roman Reigns is going to be. What two? Maybe not even. Maybe in a year from now, Roman Reigns will be like. Roman sucks. Let's go Roman. Exactly like Cena. So. I don't think he'll be just like Cena. I think people will hate Cena. Was more credible. Had more credible years than like they did. He force... had a better build up. Yes, yeah. he, they did force feed us Cena, but like back in like he started in 02, 05, 06, you still cheer a lot. Four years after his debut, and they kind of start fe- force feeding him after twenty one. So 21, 22, 23, and twenty four. I would say he was still over, and people weren't really hating on him. I don't know, I like John Cena then. I kind of hate him it's when they're fucking... It's just sad that Roman so many Reigns championships. Has, yeah. Roman Reigns has two singles matches on pay-per-view. Brian, Orton, and then on Raw, he has a few singles matches since he's returned, and he's main eventing WrestleMania. Like, he didn't... Like, he did his time, but not like other guys. Like, other guys have countless singles matches at pay-per-view to get to that spot. But Roman Reigns was kind of like, oh, you're winning the Royal Rumble. He gets injured. You're still winning the Royal Rumble. Like... You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they want to make us like him. Is they want to make us they, like him. Yeah. It's not that's not how you make a star. A star makes themselves. And I mean, yeah. I mean, he's gotten better since the Rumble. Like, I like I like him more than I did. But you know, like I still prefer Brian way more over him. Exactly. Brian, I think so. people would rather go with like their gut, like a guy that deserves it. Even a guy like and the fast the fast lane match was incredible. But the thing I hate, they had Brian, they had Roman Reigns kick out of the running knees, or not Brian not kick out of the spear. That's what I hated about that match. Like, why can't you have Brian kick out of the spear? Like, I know you want to make him look legitimate for Lesnar, but 
if you want to make him look legitimate to Lesnar, you're not going to have him lose a big show and then lose to Rollins last night. Like, he has to make it look easy because Lesnar's, I mean, Lesnar's way harder than both Big Show and Rollins in perspective, so. Well, in a, in a sense, Rollins almost beat Lesnar, so I guess they could have Rollins as pretty good as the same level as he had Lesnar beat pretty he much. He did almost. They had yeah. us thinking that so he was going close. Yeah. So close. So fantastic um, finish to that match but, um, of the Rumble. Like I said, I think like they they're force feeding us to like uh, Reigns, but obviously we all like Brian. We want to see we want like like you said organically. Everyone wants to see Brian in Chase mode win Royal Rumble and Dave versus, versus Goliath kind of at WrestleMania. Even like I think Seth Rollins like they have us like want to hate him, but I think people like him because he's just so good in the ring. Like they don't need a force feed of Seth Rollins. Like people just organically like him. Yeah, because he won Money in the Bank. He went from feuding with Ambrose to doing the stuff with the Authority. It's kind of like a Randy Orton thing. thing. Like they didn't yeah. like force feed Randy Orton when he was in Evolution, but people like liked Randy Orton because he was like organic. People like mm-hmm. liked it. Like, people like to hate him, people like to like him, because he was, like, so, like, over as himself. But, like, as Roman Reigns, like, kind of, like, making us kind of like him. People don't like that. I feel like it's more old school in my thinking of this, but they have to go to where the story is. And, I mean, even though, I mean, despite the fact that Brian's so over, the story is where, it is is with him. That's where it lies, and him coming back from injury, he never lost the belt, going to beat the guy that he was almost going to face at SummerSlam. Like, the story writes itself. Yep. But the thing is, going back to what I was saying before, Thing with Roman Reigns, you want it, you just have to go forward. Yeah, with it. once you want it, you it. can't change it. You can't change it. You have to go forward. You're going to screw up the storytelling even more. So um, it's going to be interesting at WrestleMania considering Roman Reigns, like you said, like Sal was saying, I think he has improved since the Rumble. He's not, you know, downgrading or anything like that. I think his promos are getting better. His matches are getting better. He had a really good match with Rollins. He had a good match with um, Brian at Fastlane, like we talked about before. But um, yeah, he's only going to get better in the couple weeks going into WrestleMania. Yeah, we could be. It's a bit completely rushed, wrong still. about everything. Mm-hmm. Um, what I this is what I personally believe the money for SummerSlam is do Cena versus Reigns in a singles match, no title, then do Rollins Bryan for the championship. That's where the money lies at SummerSlam. That's what I truly believe. If they want Cena Cena Reigns SummerSlam, main, and they can't even do that as the main event. But Rollins, I want Rollins Bryan for the title at SummerSlam. I could see, so. I could see Rollins, I could see Rollins, I could see Rollins cashing in in the next couple of months, like we talked about before, and then doing that match for the title because they have a lot of unfinished business there. Well, that I think match Rollins is, and Brian would write itself for me for oh, SummerSlam. Beautiful match. I yeah. think that match would be ridiculous if they gave it time. They two great workers. Yeah. I would like the Cena and Roman thing. I think they could easily have. Like that build, and then next year, I think the triple threat's already like slid in. Unless Ambrose can't, I think Ambrose is kind of like he's dying a little bit. Wait, what do you mean triple threat for the title for like Rollins, the Shield triple threat for everyone keeps saying that's the WrestleMania main event for next year. Oh yeah, I just I think they, I think Ambrose is just getting the sh- he's not getting the short of the stick. He's just not like he's not as over as Reigns and Rollins are. Yeah, so he's kind of like floundering as a over bit. as he was a couple months yes. ago. It's just he took the biggest pop of the night sometimes though. Yeah. yeah, but... Uh, He's still over, but I think but, the where they're positioning him right now... But I think now. they could have... Like, that could work, but maybe just have Re- Rollins and Reigns. But I think they have to do Cena and Bryan again. I think that could they be a that, great yeah. match at WrestleMania. They need to go back to that, yeah. I feel like, especially with Cena and Roman, I like that because it's something new. And Cena, fresh. at a time... It's absolutely fresh. fresh, yeah. At a time where we need fresh matches with John Cena. The thing with Rusev, I'm not a fan of the ending outcome with Cena winning and being the one to end the streak or whatever... But at least it's something new. And, I mean, there's not many other people for Cena to feud with after Rusev. There's Roman. There's Ambrose eventually when he turns. We saw him and Rollins a million times. <laughs> Bray, uh, Bray Wyatt we've seen a million times. Daniel Bryan, there's some unfinished business there. Dolph Ziggler, we've seen it before. Um, everyone else, bad news. Barry, we've seen before. Like there, Randy Orton, same thing. Sheamus. There's not many feuds left for John Cena atop the roster. So I'm liking like the whole Rusev thing right now. He's working with the younger guys, and Roman, I think, could work too. But um, you know, the WrestleMania main event is in jeopardy right now with Roman. If he, even if he wins and he is, quote-unquote, ready for that WrestleMania main event, the way that people react to it at WrestleMania is kind of the key. And speaking of such, it's kind of in doubt in some people's minds. With Brock Lesnar's current status with the company, he was seen spotted at the UFC 184 event over the weekend. Um, after last week, I don't think we talked about this on the show last week, after he walked out of Raw, and more details have been become uh, available since then, that it was over some, not creative dispute, but him, his next contract, and it wasn't as much as he wanted it to be, whatever. Um, so he went to UFC, talked to Dana White, whatever. And, um, you know, still, I, I guess the, the current uh, ongoing negotiations are still going on, so I guess we'll find out more about that. But, yeah, um, I heard Vince and him were really yelling at it. That's why I read that Vince and him were 
like they were like legit yelling at each other and people were concerned for Vince because Lesnar has a temper so mm -hmm. yeah I could destroy Vince lay him out with an F5 like we saw a couple of years ago so the status of Lesnar I think much like 04 he's not going to walk out before us I mean the dude's a champ I mean it's it's a different situation from a little yeah, they 10 can, years ago they can sue him so yeah they could sue he's a good <laughs> businessman he, he knows that, that is that money that he'll get at Wrestlemania exactly all he cares about he's not leaving before and then but I, he's, he's UFC bound afterwards oh though. yeah it's definite um but um, yeah. I just like I'm just worried. Like, I think he might just throw a fucking he might drop an egg on the WrestleMania. He won't give two shits because all it says is you have to wrestle. That's why that Goldberg match was not good. Yeah. He only has to wrestle. He might put on a freaking shit fest to throw it up WWE's ass for not giving him the money that Full he wanted. Him up exactly. He might he can do whatever he wants because he's done. Mm -hmm. he, he can literally lay an egg and say, "All right, I got my money. You're not gonna give me more money. F you. I'm gonna go to UFC and get more money and yep. do what I want to do." And the yeah, worst no, thing is like after he's done with UFC, so they'll probably sign him again because that's how stupid Vince is. Exactly. Just so yeah. they can just so they can save themselves, they might give Lesnar a few extra bucks at WrestleMania. So. Yeah, they can always sign Lesnar down the line. I think with Lesnar and his UFC mindset, why I'm so hell-bent on him going back to UFC is that if he's going to go back there, it needs to be right now. It can't be like two or three no, years down from now. he's older than he has yeah. to now. His prime is, I mean, his prime was 10 years ago, but... He's still a hell of an athlete. He's still a hell of an athlete, he's exactly. He and he could still be I a just don't know. I just don't know what more Lesnar wants. Lesnar came in, he's a monster. He beat Triple H, he beat CM Punk, he breaks his streak, he wins the title, he gets paid millions of dollars. What else does the guy want? Like... Why does he get, like, people would dream of that in that company. That's the thing. The guy doesn't care about the business. He doesn't care about WWE. All he cares about the money. And all, it's all, about all the he money. cares about. And the reason why I'm not upset at that is because he's so open about it. Like, he just says, I'm just here for the money. That's what his character is, pretty much. Yeah. That's why he's such a great heel. He's just a badass that doesn't care about the establishment <laughs> at all and just there for the money. Yeah. And no one can stop him, so that's like... I'm sure he felt a sense of accomplishment at uh, breaking the streak. I think Heyman said that you know he you know he was uh, uh, of course honored and respects taker like we saw in their yeah, past few years. They obviously years had ago. their respect. A lot there. of respect there, like we saw at the UFC event a couple of years ago. But um, still, though, he does not care about wrestling. The only reason why he came back was for the money. That's why he's doing the part time thing. And like I said, he he's open about it. He admits it, and that's why I respect that about Lesnar. And he's so great at what he does. I mean, if he was terrible in the ring and they paid him to come back every few months, then I'd be a little bit more upset. But his matches have always been top tier, so there's really no reason to get upset. But right. I, I, yeah, no, support, that Royal Rumble on the King Go Down one is one of the Lesnar's best matches. Yeah, I exactly. Believe, one of his best matches when I he think, came back as part time. Mm -hmm. too, so. But in my personal belief, I believe that match was as good as it was because of Seth Rollins. Oh yeah, that match was. He was a star. The match was amazing, just because Seth Rollins. Have you seen it in R Lesnar? Oh yeah, no. I, I, Seth Rollins literally put himself on the map on that match. He literally showed that he's a future star and he could be a main event there in that Absolutely. match. Absolutely. That, that Phoenix Flash. Oh my! Like I, I'm surprised he actually did it because not not a lot of guys bring the ROH moves like mm -hmm. into the company. Like like Punk, he never. We all thought he would hit the festy plunge, but he never did. Like, but Seth Rollins actually doing the Phoenix Splash was something like something that I just didn't think I would see, but I was like shocked when he did it. Incredible. Now, what I loved about that mo, what, what I loved most about that was that he doesn't break that out in every other match. Yeah. Like with the with the 450 or the Red Arrow, like Adrian Neville does, which is awesome. I still like love match. it. He does every match, so it's still a little less special for us guys. But for those like for the Phoenix Splash, he never does that. I've never yeah, seen him break that up once, except in that match. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I like that's him breaking that out. That's when he thought he was gonna win, and the Lesnar pulled mm -hmm. him out. Oh my! The God. finish was fantastic. I think one of the best finish, probably the one of the best finishes they've had in a while. Mm -hmm. And that crowd was red hot for it too. It wasn't like that Memphis crowd. If they did that at Fastlane, they would have pooped all, not pooped all <laughs> over it, but they wouldn't have like been as Pop. electric. They wouldn't, have, yeah, they wouldn't have popped as loud as they did. Say, um, Great match. I don't know. Supposedly, like Dana White said, like. He didn't invite Lesnar to the pay per view like the owner did. Like Lorenzo Ferretta invited him as a guest, and like they haven't talked about a contract. But I don't know. I think it's I think it's in the works. I think the fact that he was there is not that bad of a thing. I mean, Undertaker was at the pay. Yeah, exactly. He's a businessman. It, 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 exactly. Business it gives more publicity not only to the uh, to the Lesnar situation, but to the WWE. To the WWE, it's their champion. Like, even, don't you exactly, want your these exactly. eyes in your product? You know. Like I said, well, even, well, I mean, I mean, CM, CM Punk went to a UFC event as champion a few times. I know that in the past, but yeah. It's just because it's Lesnar. It's different. Yeah. Like ESPN, like, oh my God, Brock Lesnar at the UFC pay per view. Like that was more important than like the actual fight. People yeah, were more exactly. worried that so Lesnar was there than the actual fights. Mm -hmm. So, do you, um, with the whole CM Punk thing, I'm not to get like get on the whole discussion. Do you think if he fails in UFC, he's WWE bound again, or do you think he's just like, yeah, I'm just gonna not go back? Like, because people are yet. saying, oh, he's gonna. People are saying he's gonna fail in UFC, then be WWE. He's like, oh damn, wrestling is my career. I gotta go back now. Like. 
Now, I feel like he's not going to crawl back to WWE if he fails. I feel like he's just going to be done and retire because that's probably what we all assumed he was going to be doing anyway. I, I still say he will be back at some point, not for a full-on run maybe, just if only for just a Hall of Fame induction or a, maybe a last match or something. I have no idea, but I don't think yeah, it's going to be like I, – I don't think it's going to be like um, – Batista's not a good example. He had like one fight. Lashley's pretty good at what he does. I'm trying to think of somebody that did go off and do something else and epically failed and then came back and did wrestling. Can, do you, can Batista you think of, MMA, I would say, probably the biggest one. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of a better example because he just went off and just did movies and stuff like that too. I'm, not, I'm trying to think movies. of someone that left and came back that like flopped. I don't think anyone really did. Yeah, I'm trying to think of someone like that fits that example. But, you know, I, until Probably I can think. think of somebody, but... No, yeah, I don't think CM Punk's like that. I think I he was done anyway. I think, like, if anything, Lesnar came back the biggest star of all of them. Yeah, he had success outside. He didn't flop. And then he came back. Well, and... people consider it a flop because he only wrestled, like, he only fought, like, eight fights and then yeah. lost the last two. But he was one of the biggest buy rates, though, in that he company's has, history. He has, I think, three or four. He has five of the top, like, three or four of the top five buyouts. Exactly. That's his success in exactly. all of itself. It's yeah. just because it's, it's, it's his name. He's it's just Brock Lesnar. Exactly. That's why his return was so successful to the WWE because he had brought over some of those MMA fans and he had a whole new layer to him. It wasn't like Lesnar the wrestler. That's yeah. why I like his matches now because he didn't really incorporate what he has now in his matches. Now that he has the MMA background, like his match with Punk I thought was great because he has a lot of MMA background. Um, Cena as well, like the Kimura, like you would never, you would have never seen that from Lesnar yeah. ten years ago, you know, like stuff like I that. Is what I love. I couldn't imagine a pop, like he got a great pop, but imagine like if it never broke out on the internet that Lesnar actually got signed back to the company, like mm. it, pop would have been like it sucks. Yeah, like I, it, the internet's yeah. a great gift, but sometimes it sucks. It spoils a lot. It spoils Batista's return. It spoils Lesnar signing again. It just spoils. Plays a lot. Dude, that yeah. Miami crowd would have blown the roof off the place if it, they didn't have the internet and Lesnar returned. Well, they still blew it off the, the they roof They did too, anyway, but yeah. if they didn't know he was coming back, oh my goodness. I was still excited because I think it was more so the fact, not the shock factor. I mean, kind of the shock factor because I wasn't 100% confident that it was actually happening. But I think it was more so the fact like this is actually happening and you would have never thought it was going to happen, whatever. But, um, I mean, it was like The Rock. The Rock being the host of 27, we never, people thought he was never going to be back in like, the company only for a Hall of Fame speech later on. Like, they never thought he would like be in a ring again and mm-hmm. stuff. So I'm trying to think of a real surprise. I think uh, even The Rock, I remember, I think even like earlier on in the day, he posted on like his Facebook saying, like, I'm coming home. And he posted a picture of like a ring or something like that. Um, so even some people like knew even th- not, yeah of course like in the long term, like you were mentioning, people didn't think he would ever come back. But like the day of, oh. people thought it was him, you know. Yeah, Hogan. Hogan wasn't a surprise because I'm pretty sure they announced it like at some point, like a week before. Hogan last year, you back mean? Post- yeah, last year. Hogan yeah. like it wasn't. A, they, didn't surpri- they didn't make that a surprise because they got leaked out about him being the host. So this was one way when they announced it, anyways. Mm-hmm. They announced that a couple days earlier. I'm trying to think of somebody that they didn't announce earlier. Like, can you think of a surprise return aside from like maybe Bubba Dudley or something? I'm trying to think of someone like other uh, than a rumble, a, a rumble return that they didn't announce before and that wasn't spoiled. You know, I'm trying to. Um, the last one I know that they didn't announce, but everyone already basically knew about was Jericho. They didn't come out and announce it, but everyone already knew about it. And that's the last like surprise I can think of that they like they put video packages, but they didn't come straight out and announce oh, it was Chris Jericho. Like, yeah, the 07 what you're saying, yeah. It was all speculation, but other than like people already knowing, I'm not even sure about the last one. Maybe I'm thinking you oh. mentioned Jericho. I mean, people kind of already knew that it was it was Jericho in 07 based off the vignettes and whatever. What about his 2013 return? Um, in, in the Rumble. Yeah, um, I think he, when he came January second, I'm pretty sure those. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's all the, the Rumble. All oh, the Rumble. Um. When they, you know, I think about people didn't know about that. Yeah, that was the one I'm thinking that was probably the last big surprise in wrestling. Because Andy, it was just so um, insane because he came out number two. No one would expect that. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Yeah, no one was thinking, like, going into the Rumble, oh, Jericho's going to come back. Like, something like that, I feel like, was the last big surprise. Bubba Dudley was re- was rumored, even though that was a nice surprise. Like, I love that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's really, like, bottom line, like you were saying, it's really hard to find a good surprise nowadays that isn't spoiled. But um, what were we even talking I mean, about when we got to this? Um, I think they should. I mean, they they could have saved Brian to come on the Rumble and make it a big surprise, but they yeah. didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. But with, I think they. 
I think I would have rather them say Brian because him coming out and announcing him being a rebel, we all speculated that he was going to win. I think that's why fans were more mad. Exactly. Because everyone was like, oh, he's, he's putting himself in the rumble. He's going to win. Like, exactly. That's the issue why I think why they shouldn't even bother to put him in the Rumble anyway. If he wasn't going to win and get eliminated in the way that he did, like what's even the point of putting Brian in the Rumble? If you're going to bring him back, have him come out in number 10, get eliminated five uh, five minutes later, and not do anything with him, you know? The plan to do they, that, they did. so dumb. They did everything to save Reigns from getting booed, where you would have, like, Reigns getting booed regardless, regardless. I'm sure they regret it. And mm-hmm. they're like, oh, we should have him, we should have had him eliminate Brian anyway, he's going to get booed regardless. So. Exactly. That would have made more sense. At least that would have at least added to their matchup at Fastlane, because in storyline, Brian didn't earn the rematch at Fastlane. You know, because he, he got eliminated in fair and square, so. It just didn't make any sense, but you know, at least they have Roman Reigns going to WrestleMania. But what we were talking about before, kind of before we went off on this tangent, um, uh, Brock Lesnar uh, being in you know UFC yeah, bound, whatever. Um, that's what well, that's what we were talking about his return in 2012. But um, yeah, I think his recent run in WWE has been great. But bottom line here, uh, Sal, I'll ask you first: Do you think he's UFC bound after WrestleMania? Um, I heard I'm hearing 50-50 on this because I heard he's going to go back to UFC, but I'm also hearing he was. Um, I don't know if it was true or not. I came. I saw a report that saying Lesnar may sign back with the company, but now that whole thing with Vince and the argument, I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's going to go back to UFC. That's what I'm thinking as well. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking too. I'm thinking RJ. UFC. Yeah, UFC. I'm thinking he wrestles his final match at WrestleMania, and then that's pretty much it. I mean, I would love to see think, him sign back with WWE. Just, it's not a possibility, you know, not a huge possibility. Yeah, they're going to go do. They're going to go do um, Brock Lesnar and Frank Merrigan probably. Yeah, that's what usually fights. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Another ass kicking for Frank Mayer. Did you hear about that fight they're doing at Bellator? Ken Shamrock versus Kimbo Slice. Did you so hear about stupid. that? So stupid. Kimbo Slice has sucked at MMA. Yeah, he was never good, and Ken like Shamrock dumb. is way past yeah, his prime. So I don't know stupid. why they're bothering. Because right? Bellator's trying to get ratings. Yeah, that's what so I they heard. Have like, they have like King Mo, and he sucks. King too. Mo, I know so how he's doing that. They had like yeah. Rampage they Jackson. Out, they didn't come out and say who Punk's fighting yet, right? No. no, they haven't announced it yet. There's been a lot of speculation. Oh, some I squid. Yeah, so probably. His fight's expected for what? November, December time, right? Um, I, th- I think so. I never heard an exact date. I thought it was going to be like the summer, but that's way too soon because he's still going to be training. So I think well, it's the latest. Train yeah. for? I don't know, but he's still yeah. going to get. I don't know. I heard that. I, I heard possibly the summer, but I think the. Kinda, I think November, December might be more likely. He's got like the championship bill. dollars, but. I think it's like fifty five dollars per pay per view, but I I think I gotta order that one just because I want to see Punk. Like I don't want to try and find a shitty stream and then not then miss the whole. No, nah, you can find good the- streams. Do I watch all of mine on? Yeah, I oh, like all the pay per views before the network. I missed exactly. like, th- those days of finding streams and stuff like but that. I usually like if there's like a good UFC fight, I usually just stream on my computer. But, no, I I think oh, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. I and think you ha- it's even. I think it's worth the fifty five dollars alone though. You know. And then on the streams, you have those assholes like, oh, I'm going to stream the whole pay-per-view, but I'm going to I'm gonna turn the stream off at the main event. Sorry. Yeah, like, yeah I found, exactly. I hate those people. But at least I have the network now, and I don't know why people don't get the network. It's kind of dumb not to. I mean, yeah. I mean, I can see it's 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 ten bucks a month. Some people can't afford. It. I mean, it's only ten dollars, but to each their own. But still, I think if you're if you have the money and you don't have it, you're making a big mistake. I'm not going to say you don't love wrestling, but you, you got to be kind of a huge wrestling fan in order to have. If, if, you know, if you're a huge wrestling fan, you don't have the network. I don't know what's wrong with you because you Cause get I know a great some deal. people who were like, some people are like, I'm not going to order the network because I already, I'm, I only order WrestleMania. Well, for sixty more dollars, you can have more, all the pay per Exactly, you're paying less for WrestleMania. The stream never cuts out anymore, so that's not an issue. And you get all the other pay per views. If you don't watch the other pay per views, that's fine. But you also get all the classic content, all the other shows. Like it's a, it's an amazing deal. So I mean, I think the service so far has been a success. But kind of going back to what we were saying before, though, uh, Monday Night Raw last night, a lot going on. Uh, I know we're complete 180 from what we were talking about before. But Seth Rollins, John Stewart, I thought was a great angle last night. Um, so oh, RJ, yeah, no, it was. I thought that was amazing. I thought the the whole build up. I thought the the execution of it. John Stewart being such a wrestling fan, kind of knowing his stuff. Um, everything about that, the low blow to Orton coming down, kind of furthering that feud a little bit, was great. So, RJ, I want to get your thoughts on the, the Daily Show um, parody last night on Raw. I'm, I'm a big fan of John Stewart, so I thought this whole, like, 
wrestling Seth Rollins' marriage with Perp from the beginning. He was at Money in the Bank when I was there. And he mentioned he, that, too. He, he was like, the only that. reason why you won was because it came like, yeah, he <laughs> Yeah, he was there. I remember they showed him, like, like they, like, showed, like, celebrities. They showed him there, and, mm-hmm. um, I think it was just great. Like, he, like, him and, like, he gave Seth Rollins, like, mainstream attention. Like, he was, like, on, like, Inside Edition today on, like, ABC. Like, just media outlets you wouldn't see Seth Rollins usually, and, like, I think it was a great segment, like you said, like he knew his stuff, like going back on old stuff, like Kane was should have won the money in the mm-hmm. bank. He's like, talking about the street, like how like the authorities doesn't care about him, that he's not in the main event, like kind of yeah. like that was like, great. It was good. I think like it was yeah. a good segment. It was like not one of those like celebrity inputs that didn't mean anything. Exactly. Like he actually like meant something. Like it's all like Wiz Khalifa. Too, yeah, it was Khalifa yeah, next week. Yeah, little pander to the crowd. Those celebrities like oh, the, like they start pandering to the crowd. At least he knew his stuff. Like he mm-hmm. was a legit fan. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, he was, he was one of the, he was one of the better hosts, his, like uh, and Hugh Jackman. Those were like two of my favorites. So yeah, Hugh Jackman was really good too. I thought he was he kind of knew his stuff. And the execution of his segments were also really good. But I think the fact that we're in his home state and the fact that he knows his stuff, I mean, the timing could not have been better. But what I also liked about it, too, was it wasn't just your typical celebrity comes in, um, he hits the wrestler, you know, stuff like that. He actually played into the storyline. Like RJ was just saying, he was saying, um, you know, uh, Stewart was saying, like, if you say you're the best wrestler and you're the best talker, then why is Roman Reigns in the main event and not you? Like, why is Lesnar in the main event and not you? Like, he made a lot of good points and he furthered the feud between him and Orton nicely. Like, everything about the segment I thought was really enjoyable. And there was not one botch. Like, he didn't say... Um, Cody Kingston, like one, like Carl Edwards did a couple years ago, <laughs> or they didn't, you know. I'm I'm trying to think of other famous botches, or like Kofi Johnson, I think he called him. Like he didn't mispronounce the names because he's a fan at heart, and they can't always bring in fans of the product, but at least be aware of what's going on. And I don't know. I th- I thought the whole thing was great, so I you thought think, it was really enjoyable. Well, I heard he's gonna be. I heard, I heard. I'm not sure how true it is. I heard he's gonna be an Orange Corner at WrestleMania. Um. Not sure. Um, not sure how true it is. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Did you see Orange's tweet? Um, he tweeted something like, um, you, um, John Stewart was a great host. I hope we can have him back. Maybe hinting at him being in this corner or something. I did see that tweet. I know, I didn't really take it as it, it's hinting towards him being at WrestleMania. I think it was a one-and-done type deal, and they kind of did something on the – or they did on Raw last night where they interviewed him, and he was like, oh, do you want to be a wrestler? He's like, uh, maybe. I'll get back to you later. I think Orton's coming or something like that. That was really funny. But, um, no, I don't think they will do that. I mean, there's a chance, and I wouldn't mind it. I think, like I said, he was so great last night that I think if they brought him back for WrestleMania, it would be a nice mainstream media rub. But um, I didn't really take it that way. But, yeah, I wouldn't really mind it. Would you, RJ? No, I wouldn't mind it. I think it would be nice. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But I think the match between Orton and Rollins, regardless, whether you have Jon Stewart in the corner or not, I think it's going to be really good. But It will add to the match just because Rollins, you know, the whole – being in the rivalry with John Stewart and then being in the rivalry with Orton it will kind of add to the match, but it doesn't. It's not. It doesn't. Not 100 percent have to be there to make the match good. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be good on its own and kind of adding this layer into what I think was really, really nice. And the time it could not have been better with the way they kind of built it up and kind of planned it out. But also That's on last night's Raw, we also had a couple of other highlights as well. The Divas segment was actually a highlight of the night for once. AJ Lee making a return after a good Divas title match between Nikki and Paige. Um, Nikki retaining after disqualification. AJ comes out in her home stay, gets a big pop, fends off the Bella Twins. We get some character development for once, God forbid, after the matchup. In a backstage segment, they actually give the Divas some time to talk. Um, they're mentioning hashtag how... Hashtag give Divas a chance. Exactly, hashtag give listening. Divas a chance. And she said that in her promo. She was saying they used to be enemies, now they're friends, but not one thing we have in common is that we hate the Bella Twins. Like, this is something that we should have seen with, like, the primetime players, saying, like, why we got back together. And I'm glad they did it with the Divas. Um, and I'm not going to get my hopes up. I mean, maybe this is only for one week, and they wanted to shut everyone up after the hashtag was trending last week, so I'll have to wait and see. But um, I really like the way this played out last night. So, Sal, I'll ask you I first. think they're doing a tag team match. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. What were your thoughts in the segment last night, the return of AJ Lee in the proposed tag team match at WrestleMania? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, no, I like it. I mean, you have AJ basically what I believe is your biggest diva in that company right now. She's your Trish Stratus of today. That's what I personally believe. Not to that extent, but that's like she's the biggest diva to me yep. in that company. And then you have Nikki Bella and Brie Bell, the two, your two biggest heel divas. Then you have Paige and, uh, as over as she is. So you have your basically your four divas who carried the diva division for the whole year going and going to maybe a match at WrestleMania. That's the way you're supposed to do it. I believe instead of instead of doing some stupid match like you did last year with all the divas. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were talking about before the show how there hasn't really had a meaning, there hasn't been a meaningful match with the women at WrestleMania for years. I think probably since 
uh, since 22 with Trish and Mickey like nine years ago. So I'm glad they're actually building towards a story, whether it be a tag match or it be a fatal four-way for the title. I think also, like you said, the story is there. They've been tormenting Paige. They were tormenting AJ before she left, and she never really got a revenge. And then there's a history between AJ and Paige dating back to the night after WrestleMania last year. So it's been a nice ongoing story for the last year, and I really like how it's kind of culminating at I'm WrestleMania. I'm just glad they didn't. I'm just glad that he went with the cliche thing of doing, oh, Nikki turn. I mean, Bree turns on Nikki, then Nikki mm-hmm. Bree at WrestleMania. I did not, I did not want to see that. Yeah, I'm glad they're not going that route because they really just went. They have to go all the way. If they weren't going to turn Bree on Nikki, they should have done that months ago. And because they didn't do it, there's no point in doing it now. So I'm glad they didn't go that route. And now that Paige is a face and AJ is a face, you don't need Bree as a face right now anyway. So I'm glad they're kind of having that tag team match at WrestleMania. So I'm looking forward to it. But. RJ, what are your thoughts on the tag team match last night, the return of AJ, and the proposed tag team match at WrestleMania? I think uh, I think everyone would say, I, I agree with Sal, AJ is definitely the Trish of this generation, I think. She's over, well over than any other diva, probably. She's amazing. Everyone loves AJ. Probably more of than half the roster. Seriously, <laughs> when her music hits, everyone goes nuts. Love it. Light it up, baby. <laughs> but um, I think she's great to have her come back. Great in competitor. And add... More just a WrestleMania. I think the tag team match is good. I, like you said, I don't really need. Fatal Four is not needed right now, or even Brie versus Nikki's not needed. I think them tagging against the Bellas would be actually a good match for given time, if given time. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, if, if, exactly. Yeah, if that's a big if. Like they could have like they'll probably be like the the cut match again if they don't get, have time. Mm-hmm. Then they cut them. So is the women. But um, I think it's great for the Divas Division to have AJ Lee back, so we don't have to see Cameron and uh, even Eva and on Rosa. TV <laughs> and Rosa <laughs> is on TV, but. Uh, I think everyone loves AJ, so I think it's a win-win for WWE. Speaking of the women, though, going into the WWE Hall of Fame as of last night, Alundra Blaze, a.k.a. Medusa, has been officially inducted into the Hall of Fame as of last night. So, a great induction, long time coming, very, very worthy of the induction, obviously. One of the first women's champions in WWE, revolutionized women's wrestling, of course, with the infamous moment of tossing the women's title in the trash live on Nitro. Infamous moment that has kept her out of the Hall of Fame for all these years. But she's going in this year at WrestleMania 31. So, RJ, I want to get your thoughts on this first. Um, what are your thoughts on Alundra Blaze going to the Hall of Fame this year? Yeah, it's shocking, I think. Um, like I said, that's probably one of the most iconic images of Nitro. Uh, pretty much Nitro's history. Like, it, NWO, you all and then you on, think you see all yeah. the time. Like, her dropping the title in the trash, pretty much making it mean nothing. And um, mm-hmm. I think... It must. They must just like heal, wounds healed. Like they've been showing that over the years with Bruno and Ultimate Warrior and guys like that. I think. I guess. If like, she can go in the Hall of Fame. She can go in the Hall if of she Fame. She can go in the Hall. If she can go in the Hall of Fame for dropping the women's title in the trash, China can go in the Hall of Fame. That's how I look at it. Like. I think she will at some point. I think it's a little different with China because it's not the backstabbing thing. That was the reason why Medusa hasn't gone in or didn't go in or, until now. R- why Rick Rude hasn't gone in yet because I think the whole the fact that he left the company, whatever. Um, Lex Luger, too. With China, I mean, they, they stated the whole porn thing. I don't believe that. I think it's just kind of personal animosity. Not with Triple H, but more so with Stephanie because she was kind of jealous of China and that whole dynamic, whatever. Um, that was kind of yeah. why she's not in. But, um, you know, yeah, still, though, I think she will be in at, at some point, too. Like like RJ just said, I think you summed it up perfectly. Time heals all wounds. But, um, like, like I just said, RJ, do you feel like Rick Rude might be in at some point after kind of this development? Better be. I think I've, I've, He has I've, to be. I think next year he might be in. Like, the people that are landing now, he has to be in. I don't care what he did. If Rikishi's going in, I think Rick Rude should be going yeah. in next year. Lex Luger should be in, too. I think he'll be going. I think they got to save, not all in one class, but I think maybe the year after or something like that would be nice. But, Sal, what are your thoughts on Lunder Blaze, a.k.a. Medusa, going to the WWE Hall of Fame? Uh, she deserves it. I mean, like like you were saying, she's one of the greatest divas ever, and she's she deserves it. I mean, that little incident kept her from going in earlier. She probably would have went in her, uh, years ago, but, you know, time heals wounds, and... At least, and thank God she's going in, and like they're not keeping her out of the Hall of Fame forever just because of that one incident. Exactly. I'm glad they finally got over and kind of moved forward with it. But still, though, um, I'm looking forward to her induction come WrestleMania 31 weekend. Who inducts her, I don't know. Uh, maybe one of her uh, from of, of her opponents back in the day. We'll have to wait and see. But still, though, it's very well deserved induction, and I look forward to that. Also on Raw last think? night. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if Kevin Nash is going in, who do we see? Who do you see in that sense, Scott Hall or? Um, I think the Triple current H. plan is I think the current plan is Shawn Michaels. I think Shawn Michaels like given because I don't think he's going in as Kevin Nash. To my belief, I think he's going in like Scott Hall as Razor Ramon. He's going to be going in as Diesel. 
So I think in that case, it makes the most sense to do Shawn Michaels given their relationship. Um, but I could see Scott Hall. I could see Triple H. All, all of the members of the clique make sense. But I think Shawn Michaels is probably a lock at this point. But Here's a question. Does X-Pac in the Hall of Fame? I would think, think so. Do you think he belongs in the Hall of Fame? Yes, I think with the people that we currently have in, I think he's more worthy than Rikishi, honestly. I think I think I mean, he is. I think he is. Yeah, if X Pac can go in, then China can definitely go in because I'm pretty sure China and X Pac did. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, so. I feel like yeah, but it's also career, different though because X Pac's like triple, one of Triple H's better friends too. Yeah, I mean, people might cite that as a reason why he would go in, but I feel like his career, even as the one, two, three kid too, and in WCW, kind of makes him Hall of Fame worthy. Not like a top billing yeah. or anything, but given the credentials, I think he, even if he doesn't go in on his own, def, definitely is DX. Absolutely at some point. <laughs> Has, are they, hey, the New Age Outlaws in yet? No, they actually should be in too. Oh yeah, There's New Age Outlaws. I was just going to say that. I bet you the AP, APA could get in too. They will. I don't know if they'll induct JBL on his own. If they do, they'll probably do that first, then induct do you APA. Think, do, you think they'll, do you think they'll do New Age Outlaws or just like they'll do with a whole D, D generation X? And then like, New Age Outlaws. Then DX, yeah. I think the New Age Outlaws need to go in first. And they're under contract to the company. So, I mean, it's not like they, they can't should. bring them in. I mean, I don't know. The timing's perfect, so I don't know why. Like, the you, same think, thing with, you, think, you think once they do, like, Batista, and once they do everyone from Evolution, they'll finally just do Evolution as a whole? Yeah, exactly. I think it's going to be a while, then, obviously, because Triple H is not going to go on for a while. Rick Flair will be a, three, uh, Flair will be a three-time Hall of Famer. <laughs> oh, yeah, good point, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that's not for a while, obviously, but... I could see that happening. I could see New Age Outlaws are worthy on their own that they I need to like go in. feel like with the Hall of Fame, I think there's so many. Like, you can look at so many guys in the roster now and say they're already worthy at the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Just the people that are already in it. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's going to get really sketchy like in a couple of years from now when they're scrapping the bottom uh, of the barrel. I think they have, pl- a couple, they have plenty of guys they could vote in the next couple of years. Yeah. I think it's like they have plenty of main eventers. Like, the guys who like, aren't like Hall like the top of class will yeah. get, like, sketchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to say because we've Cause, had like, so many stars the years, over the years. Like, Undertaker, or and Cena, Mysterio. What about Owen Hart? Is Owen Hart? Owen Hart? No, he's not in there. There's the yeah, it's all the, yeah, the legal it's, issues. British Bulldog, another guy. Same thing, I think, too. I think he has some legal issues with the family or whatever. I'm not really sure, but... He also deserves to be in. I think him and... Sable should be in. Sable. I think mm, I think someone said that they're waiting until to do Brock Lesnar to do Sable. So they'll probably do him in the same class given their relationship. But on that same note, why don't you just do Elizabeth with Macho Man? Like, I don't know. Maybe, do there's, some, that, maybe there's some family issues there. Do you think Lesnar's going to be a... Do you think Lesnar's going to be like a top induction? Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. he's going to be like the, the face of the induction? Yeah. Probably. Kinda I like would how- imagine. Yeah, down the line, I think right after he's done, like if, if, if he leaves this year, he's not going to go next year, I think. Like, with the only reason why guys like Edge went in so early was it's because... What? They're hurt and they had no one else. They had no one else, exactly. But also because they were still under contract. Edge's contract was going in until 2012 anyway. And his contract expired right after after um, after um he went in. So they wanted to get him in as soon as possible in the case that... And which I think is smart because if they have any bad blood down the line, it's going to take a lot longer. Because you never know what's going to happen, you know? So if anything ever was to happen, like in last year or the year before, he would have never gone to the Hall of Fame. So his career went in, so... Yeah, exactly. As a Pothmus inductee, yeah, though. obviously. But he was going to eventually. Then. Cri- yeah, we Christian talked about this last week. RJ does not believe that Christian is Hall of Fame worthy. I think he is at some point, not Hall no, of Fame. No, like, no, 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 no. I said, I said he's not. In, I don't think he's Hall of Fame worthy by himself. I said he's Hall of Fame with Edge. No, no, that's what I'm saying. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you were. I don't think you think that he's worthy on I think his he's, own. I think he's one of the most overrated guys ever. Overrated. 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 Wow. I think he's one of the most overrated wrestlers. I think the tag team, if him and Edge don't, they're probably going to go in together. The Hardy Boys. Like, I boys. never saw him as a main event guy. I think he just. No, he was never a main event, but I think he graced for the time that he was in the main event and the stuff that he did as a tag team guy and as a mid card guy. A I tag think, team guy, I can see. It's kind of. Then. Kind of crazy where you would see Edge and Christian, like you see the success of Edge, and then you see Christian kind of like boys. the Hardy Boys. It's like the Hardy, Hardy Boys. Jeff Hardy, had, mm-hmm. Jeff, Hart, Jeff, Jeff Hardy has the success compared to Ed, like kind of like Edge, and then Matt Hardy and Christian are kind of similar in the spec, like that they were the second kind of like oh we don't yeah. care like we don't care. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I wonder. If, I don't even know if Christian would have got his moment if the whole Edge getting injured at like and having to retire. I wonder if Christian would have ever had his moment like that. Probably not, but I think I'm not. I don't know if this is official or not, but I think Edge said it somewhere that he wishes his final match 
would have been with Christian at WrestleMania 28. I don't know if they would have dragged that out because if you recall, right around WrestleMania 27 time when they brought Christian back, they were kind of doing the Edge and Christian thing. And after Del Rio, I don't know if he would have won the title or what. But I feel like they would have turned Christian heel anyway and would have done Edge and Christian over the World Championship that summer. And, I mean, maybe that's a good question. I feel like he probably would have gotten his moment if Edge lobbied for it. I think if Edge said, I want to drop the belt to Christian, that probably would have happened. So he probably would have won the belt regardless. But, um, yeah, I think that, that's my thoughts on that. I mean, it wouldn't have happened in the same fashion. Maybe he would have held the belt longer than a month. I guess we'll never really know. But um, that was never something that was ever really discussed, which is interesting. Though. So that's a good question. Yeah, I didn't like how they did that um, and just make him lose on a random smack on the Randy Orton. Like, at least did it, do it on a pay-per-view. And that's just, like, I know it's like set up for a great rivalry for the whole summer, but I still like would have liked it better if like they actually built towards it and it's not having to drop it like out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. That's I was hoping for a match between the two at like SummerSlam, and then they gave it away like the the Friday after he won the championship. I mean, it, like you said, it played into the story, and it was like, oh, Christian won, then he lost it two days later, and then that kind of fed into the whole one more match thing. But um, yeah, I know I feel like I was still slighted by that. He should have held about longer. But one more topic before we go off the air here: Samoa Joe, who we talked about two weeks ago, is the de- the developing story here with the Samoan submission machine is that. Gone from TNA, last week there were rumors of him possibly being interested in by WWE, WWE possibly having an interest in the Samoan submission machine. Now as of today, the story is that he might be close to signing a contract with the WWE, and apparently his final Ring of Honor appearance is on like April 23rd or something like that, and he's telling promoters that he's not going to be available beyond that. So, which and there's around that time, there's also some NXT tapings in late April. So the timing is a kind of suspicious thing. So, um, RJ, I'll ask you first. What are your thoughts on Samoa Joe? <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be possible. I still say I'll believe it when I see it. That's my that's my bottom line on that. But RJ, I want to ask you, Samoa Joe and WWE, do you see it happening? I see Samoa Joe in NXT. In NXT? NXT. Well, that's what I mean. That's what yeah. I mean. In um, NXT. I think it. I think it's a, gets more eyes of the product. I think. They brought Rhino, Brian Kendrick back. They brought in these all these other indie guys. I know he's a TNA guy, but Triple H is a big fan. Though. Triple H is the one that wants to like get the like he knows what hardcore fans want. They want to see Samoa Joe. Yeah, I don't know if he's ever a big fan of AJ. That's why he never went in. But exactly. I know, I know him and Joe have a good relationship. That's probably why he is coming to WWE. Yeah. That's why he's interested. And he's probably playing a big part in him getting signed by the company. Yeah. I think it'd be good for NXT. Like I said, get more eyes on the product. I think he could have great matches with these other Ring of Honor guys. That he's obviously probably had wrestling against him so. and Owens would be amazing. Exactly. Dude, so I think. Oh yeah, Owens. Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to say they're him gonna, and Owens. And then if they're gonna have like NXT start touring, they need more names. So like, yeah. and, and even if they get Joe, like that'd be good. Maybe get AJ to come down. Yeah, and like, I think some of the guys that they currently have. I mean, the roster is so stacked right now. But you got to think a couple months down the line, Zayn and Neville aren't probably gonna be here anymore. They're gonna yeah. be on the main roster. So they need to fill that void. Bringing in Joe, best thing they could possibly do. I think that even as a tryout, they need to at least try with AJ, which startled me the most. Not the fact that he's not in WWE, but they weren't even interested in, him, in signing him. They never even contacted him. Yeah, but maybe there's a beef there that you don't know about. Maybe there is. I think AJ has no beef. and Maybe on WWE side. And it's different from Joe, because AJ was the face of TNA, and Joe was never the face. Maybe that's why he was the poster child for TNA. Maybe that's why. I mean, we'll never really know. But nevertheless, though, I'm excited for it. So hopefully it comes to fruition. I'll believe it when I see it, like I said before. So Sal, what, would be his na- what do you think his name would be? Samar Joe. Samoa Joe, you think, you think so? I'll, nah, I don't I'll know. About, maybe Samoa Co. or something like that. They'll change it up. They're not like they'll have Kevin, to change it a little bit for trademark reasons. That's but what I'm saying. Like they want the, Kevin Owens, Kevin CM Steen. Punk was the only one that came with CM Punk in that. All Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan. You know? the, the, only, the only reason he was able to have that name, CM Punk, Paul was Heyman. Paul Heyman. Yeah. So maybe Triple I mean, even Triple H when you know with copyright it's different ten years later now they know it's CM Punk that they shouldn't have done that because now yeah, that he's left or whatever so exactly annoying. so still though I feel like they're not gonna call him Samoa Joe but they'll probably give him something similar Which they're not gonna call name? him like um, I don't know you wanna look that up <laughs> I'm not really Joe. sure Who knows? I'll look it up it probably is it's probably Joe. Not Joe it's not gonna be Samoa Joe it should hopefully be something similar because um, like you said they need the copyright but I love like people are like oh Finn Balor is such a stupid name I but love there's, Finn Balor. there's some meaning behind the names though like Hideo Tommy means like war or Finn Balor means that or something like that and Kevin Owens Owen Hart and he was a big fan of his and I think Owens is the I name mean, of his son Jesus Christ so that makes so- sense <laughs> his real name is New. 
Nufalu, Nufalu Joel Sanoa. So I guess Joe from his male name, but that front name, like Samoa knew. Like. So probably they will not be going with that name. We can't even pronounce it. So uh, yeah, like, uh, look at that. It's like double. G- Jesus. Yeah. Well, it's Samoa name, so yeah, yeah. it's, it's going to be hard to pronounce. But they're not going to give him that. Um, name. But um, I mean, I'm trying to think of names. I can't even like they can. I mean, it sounds cheesy, but I mean, it sounds actually kind of cool. Joe Awesome. I don't know. I don't know what they could use. Like. Yeah, it I has mean, to be something kind of, Joe. It can't be Samoa Joe. Something along those lines. It has to be Samoa like Joe. They'd have to get rid of the Samoa part. Yeah, they'll have to get rid of the Samoa part. It's something. At least they could still chant Joe. You know, Joe is going to kill you. They're still going to say that. Joe is going to Yeah, exactly. Like, so they can still oh, chant Owen, that. Owen's going to kill you. Yeah. They even use Owen still, but yeah. still. still. The, next, the next guy I want to see get signed after, if Samoa Joe gets signed, is Adam Cole. You know that. Uh, yeah, he's, I think Honor, yeah. he's really, really good. I feel like they might take a look at him because he's young. He's a great talker. He's really on his way. He's in a completely different place than he was like a year ago. Yeah. Um, and his heel stint as champ was really good. So I feel like there's a big Don't chance. Don't gobble up all those indie guys. Yeah, that's the new thing think, now. Yeah, from I was ROH, they're, they're... Those, Sam, those, those Sam Roberts interviews, and I think he mm-hmm. was saying that he had a tryout, like one of those things where they bring people in and like you know they let them run the ropes and like do some like. Mm-hmm. Stuff and he he said it went very well. And this and, was about a year ago. I watched that video. Oh so. yeah, I, mean, I thought that was recently. I feel like they did another tryout recently. I'm yeah. not really sure, but I think they did. He's he's young enough where I feel like he could still come in like in the next couple of years or so. He's got time. He's still only going to develop even more on the indies. But Ring of Honor, they're just snatching these guys. They're up just left eating and these right guys yet, up, which is what Ring of Honor should be branding themselves as. Like we produce future WWE, stars. Yeah. yeah, you want to be here. Like you want to. Come to Ring of Honor so you can go to WWE. It's a stepping stone to go to it's WWE. It's kind of like a developmental, below developmental. It's kind of exactly. like a farm system. It's kind of like AAA. Exactly. It's not like TNA, we're going to take your ex-WWE guys or ex-ROH guys. We're going to make them something. Like with TNA, is like the, 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 the retirement home for people to just to die at. You know what I mean? So. It's like the yeah, guys that didn't make I'm, it in I'm, ROH or WWE. Exactly, yeah. Will Samoa Joe be the first uh, TNA grown star to go to WWE? Like, Probably. Actually, like, we talked about this uh, a couple weeks ago. Be. Brandon Walker was a TNA grown star. Um, Chris Harris. Chris so Harris. But he, he wasn't. Didn't he wasn't, succeed at all. He I wasn't mean, really it, that big of a name that you'd think of him. Yeah. If you say, well, Awesome Kong as well. If you say, if you're saying like TNA homegrown star to succeed, yes. But um, even I don't even know if I would say TNA homegrown because he was in Ring of Honor for a while before yeah. he went to TNA. But um, if you're saying TNA star to succeed in WWE, I would say absolutely. I think of all the guys. Chris Harris, Awesome Kong was a you know just a matter of Best bad timing, thing, yeah. and I can't think of anyone else. Um, Xavier Woods, that you know he's been bombing too, a part of the Ooh, new Consequence day. Creed. Consequences, our Creed, truth, yeah. our Well, he and was the in WWE like, before. The thing I like about NXT stars, like I'm seeing a trend here. You're like, um, these are like all, mo- a lot of those uh, NXT stars don't even have to go to NXT. They could they could be on the main roster right now? They're good enough, but them being NXT makes NXT that much more special. Like exactly, they're that, making it more credible. That, that's why it's so good because these are people that the IWC knows. Everyone like people know these guys as wrestlers, like not the people who are coming up out of nowhere that we don't know about, don't know who they are. Like these are people that we all know about and we know how good they are. So I think the fact that NXT is on the network only helps it too because I think the fact that you know the the casual fans that aren't aware of their indie work. Um, are kind of getting exposed to their work on NXT, kind of getting to know what they're capable of, and the fact they get so much air time and ring time and whatever only helps that matter, of course. So um, I think it's better. I think, Like you said, they could be on the main roster right now, but if Sami Zayn went to straight to the main roster like a year or two ago, guarantee you he would have been lost in the shuffle. Same thing oh, with yeah. the Laura. I was going to say, I think, I think them going to NXT is good too because they learn their WWE system. Exactly. And then they don't just go to the main event as like this hype star and just flop like Sin Cara. Or Mystical, whatever the hell his name was. He could have he could have used NXT first and then going up. He skipped developmental yeah. completely. That's why he flopped. Owen, so. I think you're like like not everyone's going to be obviously not everyone's like from NXT going to be able to be successful on the main roster. But world champions that I think are going to definitely happen down in NXT are Kevin Owens and Finn Balor for a fact. I think, I think those two I, will be. Mm-hmm. I think those, those two will be the most easily. Mm-hmm. Those two will be the most successful out of NXT. That's what I personally believe. Sami Zayn will be very successful, but I don't know if he'll be if he'll be as successful just because I say Finn Balor. Not 
he is like a smaller guy, but the war paint and everything, and Owens is just the beast of the guy. So yeah, Owens. I mean, the build Owens itself is a, given, is a world champ. I think Belor, like you said, he has the look. He has more. Yeah, he has the look, and he also radiates stardom every single time he comes out. And then Zayn is so charismatic. I could see him like a Brian like role where he can win the title. I think, like you like, said, those three are more likely to win the world title more than anyone else right now in NXT. Like Neville, Neville. What I, I see Neville as an upper mid Carter guy in the yeah. roster. I could be wrong. Maybe he'll maybe he'll get one run as a champion. I'm not sure. I feel like he'll definitely be upper mid card. I would love to see them prove me wrong, but like you said, I feel like he's more limited than the other guys in that. He's a good, he's a better mic worker than what he was like a year and, or two ago, but the look and the size especially, it's not even like Brian. At least Brian has like the overall package yeah. of like what, a, you know, a, of a top star. Yeah. He kind of evolved into what he is. And he got Neville, over. If they he got over, called, exactly. So, um, someone else that comes to my mind, if he like puts in the work and gets a very good, Baron Corbin can be something special. That's what I think he has like a different look, a unique look, and it's kind of it's kind of a cool look. And like, but he just has. I just want to see more of what he has because all I've seen of him was like five minute in ring works to the max. Like most of the match was like thirty seconds long. So mm-hmm. yeah, he's really in the fence right now because I feel like the match with with Bull wasn't good, obviously. But I didn't I didn't really like it that much. But I feel like if they book him properly and if they give him more time to showcase what he's capable of, because right now yeah, we have but no how idea. Do you know how much he's capable of. That's exactly it. They I gotta... think he's a guy that might see developmental for a couple more years. Oh, absolutely. But I feel like we don't know. Maybe he could be a great wrestler. I really have no idea. I doubt but it. I think I don't think he's that good a wrestler because I think they would showcase if he was a good wrestler. True. True. I think they're gonna hinder his flaws. Obviously, that's why he has squash matches. He's not. He's probably not the greatest worker. And what so he's that... doing right now, they can, you can only do that for so long. Yeah. Though, you know. But um, yeah, I feel yeah. like he he could also could be very very good if they handle him properly. That's like saying like let's have Ryback go out there and have twenty minute matches. Exactly, it's not gonna happen. you got to work their strengths. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I think Baron Corbin could be good too. But I agree with all the others. But um, that's gonna do it. Wrestle Rant Radio here tonight. Twenty six days away until WrestleMania thirty one. Sal, thanks for so much for coming on, brother. We really appreciate it. But before we let you go, no uh, want to let you plug your Twitter, Facebook, blog, anything you want to plug in the show before we let you go. Um, you can just follow me on uh, my wrestling Twitter is the wrestle guy. And if you want to follow me on my personal page, it's Sal D'Angelo Jr. It's up to you. Follow you the war. And that's about it. Sounds good, man. We'll catch you down the road. All right. See you later. See you, bro. RJ, of course, your shameless plugs. Go right ahead. Um, Shannon, Molly, and uh, Cam, and Graham. That's it. That's it? Dude, Third week shit. in a row, dude. dude I don't want to shout out to so I don't care. Uh, at Raymond underscore Marceau on Twitter. Um, besides that, hashtag, we love you, Ray. <laughs> we love you, Ray. Do you think they can get us another DVD on them or something? I feel like oh, they could do I that. I've seen the newest one. The one that's like the green one. I don't know. I, I see the Wasn't that a couple years ago, yeah. I think? I feel like they need to do another one or at least do something on the network, yeah, like I, have, I like, said. Yeah, I old, like, 619 one. It's like it's like him like talk about like his like Tijuana days. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. Shows his house and stuff. It's a sick house. Yeah, it was one of the more recent. Or that was one like from a while ago, that was wasn't like, it? Too. Yeah, that's from a long time yeah, ago when I he first like arrived. It, so. But yeah, I feel like they need to do something for it, right? But. Like we were saying before, uh, next week, WrestleRant Radio, we will be, what, 19 days away until WrestleMania 31 at that point, if my math is correct, but the road is ever coming. Next week, we are back on live, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 Central Time, live, 365.com, backslash stations, backslash ECTV73. Um, I think we've got Jacob on next week. The next week after that, for the 17th St. Patrick's Day, well, you are off on break, so we're not live. So we're going to find a guest to do an interview with or something like that. And then the week after that, two-hour special, two-hour WrestleMania extravaganza with Michael Yoder, EC alum, baby, coming on for the WrestleMania roundtable. That's going to be a lot of fun. But in the meantime, in the between time, guys, you can find me on Twitter at... At Russell Rant on Facebook, at Graham Jason Matthews. Bleach Report, same thing. YouTube, same thing. Make sure to check out my articles on Bleach Report, What Culture, and Pro Wrestling Shirts. And like I said before, we will be back next Tuesday with an all new episode of Russell Rant Radio. Thanks for joining us, folks, and we'll catch you next week. Oh, do I-